just do it on uh, the laptop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, although that's probably like 720p. It could be 1080. Um, I think I might end up getting a new phone next month just because I'm starting to run into storage issues and I have for a long time. So I think that's probably like the number number one factor that's causing the, the decision. I'm coming for that number one spot. Uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> number the, one spot. <laughs> how was the second meeting, buddy? It was good. Nice. It's good. It's not as good as talking to you, buddy. I mean, talking <laughs> to you is like, I mean, that's top priority right now, you know? <laughs> nice. Um, nice. You know what? Hey, I got a... I got an iPhone 10R if you want to buy it. I think I might do the 12 mini. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I'm I, I'm throwing it out there because I probably might buy a phone soon. Uh, 10R is like I think two years old, three years yeah. old. Yeah. I don't know. This thing I've got a six. It's like six years old. Um, I got pretty much the maximum amount of life I can get out of it. Um, and it's like starting to run into issues where like I can't film sets anymore. <laughs> Cause I'm like at max storage capacity pretty much. And if I do, if I want to like look at like a video that I posted, maybe it's like I'm doing posing or like whatever it is, being a poser. Um, if I wait more than like 12 hours to like watch it back, you can't watch it back again. Cause it's like uploaded to the um, iCloud. And then yeah. usually like the Wi-Fi is so garbage that you just like can't watch it. So it's just like, okay, well that was kind of a waste. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was running into when I uh, before I got this phone, dude. It's so crazy that they now like you can film in uh, HD or 4K with 30 frames per second or uh, 60 frames per second for both. Yeah. Um, so like, I mean, even if I'm doing this right now, like the it's so crazy. The video quality is just amazing, and I, I haven't even recorded anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. It's ludicrous. It's you can get freaking like 256 gigs of storage too in um in like the newer um iphones which is like absolutely absurd i think i have 16 gigs in the iphone 6 so just like next level yeah and um honestly like i i i pay for apple storage i only do like the 99 uh cents plan but it gives me enough um and then Amazon, my Amazon Prime accounts, they uh, they pretty much, I think that's free. So like I actually back up to Amazon and then I pretty much use Apple storage. So I have like two, I have like two destinations where my video and uh, photos uh, go to. So I think it's a pretty nice plan to have. Um, the only thing is though, like, you know, I used to be one of those people that like backlog logged like my, um, like my like my videos and photos off my MacBook, but like honestly, like I don't do that anymore. Um, I don't know. Like I feel like I looked at my photos and videos once from like my past like lifetimes, like maybe like eight years ago. So I don't know. It just depends. Honestly, I think you should just delete everything and just start fresh. Yeah. Every once in a while, I think a little purge would be uh would do a lot of people good. Yeah, but um, buddy, I mean. What's going on? Where have you been these my whole life? What's going on, buddy? Yeah. Um, so sorry, Gaines Nation. Um, I've literally been all over the country the past couple of weeks. Uh, two weeks ago, my brother came and visited me and uh, stayed in Chicago for a bit. And then I ended up uh, going back for a quick trip to Massachusetts. Um, so I'm back in uh, Chicago. And you're killing it. Killing it every day. Session yeah. two this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. That no, that's that's good, buddy. Welcome back to the Midwest, home of the land and free, home of the free and so, somewhat free. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, we're gonna use this video. We're gonna do like a quick little. We're gonna do like uh, an update for like Roman and I, since it has been about three weeks since you've heard from us. Um, in three weeks, I feel like a lot's been changing or changed. Um, so Roman, uh, to start things off, like, uh, how much do you weigh? What's your waist measurement? Tell me your body fat percentage, tell me your BMI, and then following up with that, your social security number. And I think we should have a good start from there. Nice. 
All right, I'll start with Social Security as well as credit cards. <laughs> Ian, please tell us the billing address of those credit cards, too. <laughs> so I waited at 175.8 this morning, I think. Um, so the weight, my peak was 178.2, I think. And um, that was like a, maybe a week or two before my brother came to Chicago. Um, then we were like running around doing a bunch of crazy stuff. We were still hit, we still hit the gym, I think three or four times while he was down. And then, um, we hit the gym back, um, in Massachusetts, I think three times. And then we hit a, a workout in the basement once. Um, but I think I ended up dropping five pounds. So I went down to 173. And then since I've been back, I'm back up to 175.8. Um, so the goal is to just maintain between like 170 and 175, probably for the rest of the year, um, just so I can work on like, um, but like kind of recomping, um, work on like the body composition. I think I've gotten to like the, the peak mass that I was like willing to like sustain. Um, and I'm pretty impressed with the results. Um, at least for like a lot of push movements, they've been just going up, up, up. So, um, 235 by four is my best bench recently. 230 by five, um, incline, my best is 175 by eight. Um, so the goal is to get to 185 by eight for all four sets, um, by like the end of this, this, um, like mesocycle, which would end, um, in June. Um, so, yeah, I'm at about 175 pounds, give or take a pound. Um, and body fat percent is probably like 18 or 19 percent. Um, so it's on like the fluffier end, like the higher end that I'm like really like comfortable with. Um, yeah. I, I do like since that, like the way it's like started to come down and like kind of like average out, I am starting to get in. Um, like I'm starting to notice like the rear delts are coming in a little bit, which was like my uh, one of my goals for this. Um, this training block was to try to, as much as possible, catch like the rear delts up to the, um, the medial delts or like the side delts. Um, just cause I feel like, um, when I do like front relaxed pose that like the, um, the side delts are starting to pop and I've got some like definition there, but if I do a, um, like a side chest, um, you can tell like the rear delts are just like these. This, this baby muscle, um, which appears to be lagging. So I, I want to fill that out. So it, it's more even with the, the front and the, the middle delt. Yeah. And also too, um, what I would say is too, since you're going to probably take the whole year around this weight, like 170 to 175, um, give or take, um, I, I, you know what, I think what you should do is try to, uh, I'd say give some, get some measurements going. So like, when you do a cut to like maybe 165, um, we could see what areas you like lost weight and maybe like, you know, maybe your waist goes a little bit down and maybe your glutes go a little bit down, but like everything else like stays similar or, um, you know, and you, you become more vascular, which would be the goal and, you know, become stronger in those body parts. Yeah. Yeah. It would be cool to, I, I do want to get like, um, I do want to get like lean, nothing like I don't know if I'll ever want to get like stage lean to be honest with you. Um, although like I do like the act of like bodybuilding. Um, I might just like lifting, like going till failure and then eating a lot of food. <laughs> that might be like my form of bodybuilding. Um, yeah. no, but jokes aside, um, I think that's a good idea. I should do that. Um, yeah. Cause you're, fo you're more focused with bodybuilding. So that's like, uh, that's like one of the things I think some of the top performers do like they yeah. don't, they don't just look at themselves and say, Ooh, like my biceps stay the same size. They don't really <laughs> yeah. look at that. They, they yeah. go ahead and measure body parts. You know, they'll do, you know, your chest, your back, back flex, biceps, forearms, quads, calves, like all that good stuff. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering if you do that and then you kind of look at like your cutting stoppage and like, see what you, uh, measure out when you, you know, finish cutting and whatnot. I would like to see like how that would add up. Like that'd be pretty cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. Like I definitely know I'll bring like my waist, um, down from probably about like 32 to 28. Um, 
So that would be really cool to see. And then like it would nice be nice to have numbers because like you can tell over time like oh like my chest is filling out like I finally have like pecs, but it's like to what degree? It would be yeah. nice to know like yeah I've got like a 32 inch like I'll just make up numbers 34 inch chest and then like after like six months it's like 36 inch like and I haven't gained like you know too much of an appreciable amount of like body fat like that would mean that you've had some like pretty legitimate like chest gains I, I've been meaning to do that for years actually um, I've just, just do like, it buddy I just need to commit yeah and also you can then become like Arnold and just say you know, I'm like an artist, you know, I just slap on some clay, you know, I need rare delts. I just do more rare delts. That's just that's slap what, on some clay. That's pretty much what I do. Like, I don't do like, um, I, I'm like nowhere near like the level where I need to do like a specialization cycle. But since I did notice that like the rare delts were lagging behind the, um, the, uh, side delts, I figured why not just increase the volume for the side delt work. And then yeah. keep the um, the side delt work, um, keep it like constant or just like increase it at a slower pace. Um, I know it won't be like after 12 weeks, it's like they're even, but um, I, I have noticed that like it appears that the rear delt is starting to catch up more. And like in certain like poses or like certain like positions, I, I've noticed that like the shoulders look more full. And I will, I will state too that like, I think uh, one mistake I was making, and hopefully this um, helps uh, like newbie like bodybuilders, uh, even like uh, intermediate bodybuilders, don't uh, don't underestimate um, the power of like compound um, shoulder shoulder like moves, like shoulder pressing, for example. I've had shoulder pressing um, removed from my um, like program for a long time because I was focusing so much on pressing. So much of it was just like bench press sprinkling a little bit of incline. Um, but now that I've moved pretty much solely into like bodybuilding type training, um, when I'm working out and like when I'm programming, I found that, um, I really love like the pump I get from, um, dedicated shoulder work. So not just, um, what, what I would figure is you do hit the, um, the front head of the delt quite well for any type of pressing movement. So if I was anywhere in the range of like six to 10, six to 11 sets um, per session of chest, then I figured um, if it was a pressing movement, not, not a fly, um, I would figure um, that I had worked the um, front delt enough. Um, and then I would do, you know, a lot of like my last um, training uh, block I did, um, I think six sets of um, dumbbell lateral raises across two sessions and I also did dumbbell upright rows um, to work on building up the the, um, the lateral uh, or like side delts um, and then I just did I think like four sets of like machine um, like the reverse pec tech fly for my rear delts and then whatever else um, from like a pulling pulling movement um, either like vertical or horizontal to hit the rest of the um, the rear delt I found uh, since I've started to do um, um, dedicated shoulder um, pressing that I think that it uh, disproportionately adds mass to your um, your shoulders compared to single joint movements. So that would be my um, my advice is don't don't um, don't fall for like the trick that um, pre pressing is going to be enough for your shoulders. You definitely I think that compound shoulder um, movements, so like more than one joint is moving, um, is a really powerful tool in a, a like a young to intermediate bodybuilder's uh, tool toolkit. Yeah, yeah, and it and it helps a lot with uh, and you were saying pressing, but it does help with a lot of pressing um, because when I was uh, benching and all that and getting, you know, all those gains from, uh, for bench. I mean, I was still doing Arnold presses. I was still doing, you know, military press standing or, you know, military press seated. So, I mean, I still did that while I was still pressing, you know, for my shoulders. Um, but yeah, I would like to, 
you know, by by next year, I think Roman and I should probably we should try to save like our gains this year, and then uh, next year I would like to like cut like 10, 15 pounds with Roman and kind of see where both of us are at. Um, because like, you know, I'm on a gaining phase two and I think, I think for a year now, um, maybe over a year, probably over a year now, um, I think I put on like 15 pounds. So, um, so yeah, I mean, right now, like I'm 216. Um, but if you haven't seen the post that I posted the other day, um, I think I strained my lat. I hope it's not a tear. I don't know if it's either or. So I'm going off of like what I've read and what I feel. Um, but Roman kind of helped me determine like what I'm probably going to do for the next week, maybe two weeks, depending on um, I'm going to not do anything that needs stabilization through my lats. Um, so pretty much where the lat inserts to like your armpit and then the top of my, not the top of my trap, but like the mid trap, like where it's like mid back on the, t- the higher end. Um, those are like the two trigger points. If you haven't seen the Instagram post, I circled like a diagram of like the lat muscle itself. Um, those are like the trigger point pain points right now. Um, so nothing to do with, I can't, I'm not squatting right now. I'm not deadlifting. I'm not benching. Um, and a lot of the things like where it's like loading on the top of your back, I can't do like hack squats. Um, I can't press, I can't do like arm curls on my right arm. So, uh, it's been funny. Um, I've been actually doing lightweight, just my left arm and stuff. So, uh, I don't know if that's going to hinder like the gains when I come back from my right side, but, uh, I don't really care. I'm, I'm, I just, I'm excited for the gym. So whatever gets accomplished, it's, it's kind of, it's, it makes me happy. Um, it doesn't make me happy that I can't bench squat or deadlift right now, but, uh, I think if I take this week off or two weeks and if it's fully healed, then I'll slowly get back into things, meaning like I'll do 25% of the load or yeah, maybe 25% of the load, maybe do like bar squats, maybe like 55 pounds bar squats or deadlifts, maybe like 95 pounds just so I can get that muscle like back to it. And in part of me thinks it's kind of a, Because we went back in the gym in December, I think it's because of all those newbie gains. I think my body just wasn't recovered enough. Um, Meaning like, you know, prior to going to the gym in December, I mean, the only weight I could deadlift and squat was like 225 was the highest for everything. I didn't squat 225 because I didn't even have a squat rack. So like the heaviest I was squatting was 135. The heaviest I was deadlifting was 225. And the heaviest I was like pressing was probably like 95 pounds. Um, but to, to give you guys kind of more stats, like I worked up to a seated press on military for reps of 155 or 165, one of the two. I did standing overhead press for 155. Uh, bench, I was doing reps with 275 with the slingshot. Squat, you know, I'm, I've been pressing that much, like a, really a lot especially with doing like a lot of work with the squats, like heavy walkouts and uh, pin squats and then deadlifts the other day, I think I posted the video, you know, I've been doing sets of four Oh five for reps. So I'm thinking that's what caused it. I think it's because of the fast, like gains, you know, it's good for newbie gains when it comes to like the speed of recovery and whatnot, because like, even though you like we're Roman and I have been lifting so much, like even me just doing 95 to reps 155 and then deadlifts of 225 to 405 that's a huge gap so i'm thinking i'm thinking something like that kind of just messed up um when it comes to like just recovering and it just happened to be my right side so um i like i said i'm gonna lay off it for like a week or two on the second week if i still feel the pain with the movements I'm probably going to go to a PT like Roman suggested, but uh, I'm really cheap and I'm trying to figure it out myself before paying for stuff because let's be honest, insurance doesn't cover shit. Um, Insurance is just there for if you get a big injury. Um, And I don't think I'm going to get a big injury for a while now, knock on wood. You know, like I I, I don't think I'm going to break anything. I don't think I'm going to get into like a major accident. Um, 
unless that happens. But like, I, I don't think insurance really does as much as they say, even though you might have like the best insurance it, that your company has, um, like I do. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I've been laying low on that. Um, you know, my leg workouts are still extremely, extremely successful. Like, I mean, now since I haven't been squatting, I just been doing leg press or hack, since I can't do hack squats either or deadlifts, I've been doing leg press. Um, and, um, I've been doing them a little bit more range of motion than I have been before. Um, if you haven't checked out like, uh, RP Renaissance periodizations, uh, leg press, like how to fix your leg press, like the six mistakes or seven mistakes. Um, you know, a lot of the times, like I was always high up on the leg press, but I actually put my feet as low as possible until I can't press off my heels. So I did it with lightweight and then kind of determined, but, uh, Yesterday I was doing three plates on each side and people are like three plates. That's nothing. But if you do it the way like Mike Isretel tells you or the way I was doing it yesterday, you, you're not going to do more than three plates. I could tell you that right now people squatting 400 pounds could probably barely do like four plates the way that we like they like he, like he suggests with full range of motion. So, I mean, hey, I'm still getting good workouts. Um, I do miss doing upper body stuff, but it's it's hard to do a lot of upper body stuff because your back holds and stabilizes a lot of things that you don't think about. Like just, you know, if, if you if anyone feels this pain ever, like even trying to do like a bicep curl, you'll feel it right in your like that part that I'm talking about. Um, it's not exc excruciating where the pain like hurts my lips lifts because like, like I was telling you, I did 405 for reps the other day. I mean, maybe I have a pretty high pain tolerance, but I mean, I don't think it's a tear because if it was a tear, I probably wouldn't be able to stabilize 405 like that pretty easily. And I was doing reps of three or sets of three reps. Um, so I'm going to hope it's not a tear because I don't want to get surgery. I don't want to get my lat uh, reattached, uh, as one would say. I don't think that'd be a good experience. And I'd probably be out of the gym as long as, longer than two weeks. Um, so, you know, I might. But I, 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 you got to look at the positive things. I know Roman and I preach it a lot. But like now, like I texted Roman and uh, one of our other friends that we're good friends with, uh, that we have a group chat with, like, I want my legs to be freaking huge now. So since I can't really do upper body, like I want my quads and my calves and my hamstrings to grow. And I don't care who's watching. Like maybe, maybe I'll be one of those guys where my glutes and my thighs are just so huge. And I have a small upper body for a while because I can't lift, but Hey, I'm still going to have a huge body either way. So I, you know, I'm going to use this as like a success to concentrate more on my legs and yeah, and I know the recovery times might be a little bit harder because of the fact that, um, you know, I'm hitting legs a little bit more, but see the thing is when I do daily walks, I hydrate, I eat food. Um, you know, I'm always ready for that next session. So I think that's where, you know, Roman and I get more successful than a lot of people in the workout industry, because when a lot of times when people get hurt, they just do nothing. They sit on their butt, they get fat, they get unhealthy and, as sad as that sounds, it's true. Um, I'm never like that at all. Like, even if I, I never broke anything. I broke my pinky one time, but it was when I was in preschool. But like, if, even if I broke something, um, I'd still be in the gym the next day. I'd still be trying to figure out what the heck I can do in control and then do other things. Like I said, I want to grow my legs a lot. If I can't do upper for a while, I want to grow my legs. So when I hit a squat or a deadlift, it feels like nothing. My legs are just back to normal. And like when I hit the squat, I'm in that barbell, I I'm back to my same weight. You know, I, I want to prepare myself, even though I can't bench, I know my bench is going to get hurt a lot in my overhead press, but I know like if I keep my legs strong and heavy, then my deadlifts and squats will be nothing to worry about. You know, it'll be, it'll take time to build up again, but nothing to worry about. And I know Roman, I said a lot right there. Um, do you want to add anything, buddy? No, it's really good. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. I, I also like, knock on wood, I like hope and pray that it's like uh, just a strain and that um, it just needs like a little bit of, a little bit of off time, a little bit of TLC, and then um, you'll be able to get right back at it. Obviously, like ramp back up slowly, but. Yeah. And plus it's summertime too. Like, you know, I like, I, I mean, we usually go hiking too. So like, 
you know, maybe I'll get better. Maybe I'll do more hiking and still build on my legs a different way and just do other things. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. I'm here for the gains train, baby. If you're not, <laughs> if you're not, by, by the time, if you got to this point into this podcast, if you're not about this gains train, please don't listen to another gains podcast. We, we, we're all about the gains. We're <laughs> positive robots. We eat, we lift, we sleep. And yeah. Um, also too, Roman, I don't know if you listened to it yet, but if you guys haven't listened to the Huberman podcast, please check it out. It's like, he's a neuroscientist, uh, that's a professor at Stanford and he talks all about like the head and like your brain and like how, you know, like he talks about sleep. He talks about like, you know, Arcadian rhythm. I, I think I pronounced that right. Um, and like all this good stuff about like, sunlight and you know like how to switch like your clock like even he even goes over like jet lag um in like pretty in depth like your body temperature and like your 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 standard window if you have jet lag if you like go to a different time zone in the world it's crazy like this stuff is like crazy um so i suggest you guys to look at them for a while if you need something else besides like lifting or Joe Rogan. I know some of you guys listen to Joe Rogan a lot. So if you uh, if you want to, I think he was on Joe Rogan, right, Roman? Yeah, yeah, he was. Is um, does he have his podcast on Spotify? Yeah, yeah. I think he has it. I think he has it pretty much on everything. He actually just started uh, YouTube. I think YouTube's the newest one. So he does a video. Um, he does a video podcast. But see, the thing is, since I pay for Spotify Premium. I just do it through Spotify because I could just lock my screen. Um, video is nice, but the only person that has video on Spotify is Joe Rogan. So yeah. um, it's it, I, I love listening to Joe Rogan on Spotify because I can watch the video and lock my phone. Like, say, if I'm going for a walk and yeah. I just want to listen, I could just lock my phone and walk. Yeah. yeah YouTube, awesome. YouTube's nice, but see, the thing is, it just sucks that you got to always have it on, like your and, phone. Uh, and it drains the battery like crazy. Yeah. But YouTube's nice, though. I mean, most of my stuff I watch is pretty much YouTube. I think I watch more YouTube than I watch, like, Netflix or Hulu. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I'm probably in the same camp. But um, anything else you wanted to add, Roma, before we close this bad boy out? Um, for updates. Oh, I shave, too, guys. Think yeah. of that. I, I, don't I, think anyone, I don't think everyone, anyone would see it. I need to save. It's it's getting pretty bad. It's getting to that burly nature again. I'm trying to get the hot boy summer, so people don't think I'm getting <laughs> closer to 30 years old that I'm like 21 again. You know? Nice. Yeah, it's crazy. Like as soon as I shave, it's just like five years. I don't I don't know. I I think I still look like a 12 year old. So even with a mustache and a, a beard. Yeah, and and also too, guys. Um, speaking of age, um. Sam and I actually met uh, one of like the gym rats that are, I say gym rat because he's always there when we're there. Um, we met one guy, we actually met two guys. Um, they don't po- they don't know we have a podcast, Roman, so I never really mentioned it yet, but m- maybe when I talk to him more. But one guy was almost 60 years old. He asked us like, you know, like we t- were talking more and he was like talking like he can't squat anymore because he actually had like a pretty big like he like I think he like punctured a lung or something with his rib cage when he was squatting when he was younger I think he had so much like abdominal pressure he kind of like blew a gasket and he's like wow. never wanted to squat again um but he you know he asked us like he goes hey like guess how old I am dude looked like he was in his 40s he's like almost 60 um oh. yeah yeah big success story uh, shout out to him and then I met another guy uh he's actually competing in July He's like 44 years old yeah, and, yeah. and, um, he showed me a before picture. He was pretty big, like pretty big. Yeah. And he is Jack now. So even if you're listening and you're 44 years old or you're close to 60, Roman and I are not even, wait, Roman, are you 30? You, you hit 29, 29. Okay. Um, sorry. I, I, I had a brain, a brain fart, but like that, you know, um, just talking to some people in the gym, you know, since we in Arizona, we're a little bit more open than other states. Um, yeah, I met two awesome guys, one's 60, one's 44. And, you know, the ones competing in July, I don't think I'll be able to make it because I'll probably be back in Chicago. 
Um, but I did get his number just in case, like if, if for some reason we're back in town. Um, but yeah, I mean, the sky's the limit. I, you got to just stay healthy, stay motivated. And also it's hot boy, hot girl summer, 2021. You got to get ready for summer, baby. Maybe in AZ, not in Illinois yet. Although I think it might be in the 60s today. Yeah, I mean, it's 100 degrees here, so we always got to look good. Oh, yeah. Um, but anyways, I know I talked to crap ton. Sorry about that, Roman. Um, but but we got some big things coming maybe next week or the week after. Um, we're per- pretty excited about that. Um, we'll share it to you guys when the next podcast comes or the week after. Um, but Follow us on all social medias for Instagram. Follow us at Gaines Podcast. Uh, we usually tag our personal accounts. You're more than welcome to you know, follow our personal accounts. DM us, email us, um, gainspodcast at gmail.com. I don't think we really throw that out there, um, but we do have a Gaines Podcast email. I don't, even know if I, have, I don't even know if I've signed into it for like a year. Um, <laughs> I don't ever check it. But maybe we should check it. Maybe we have emails. Um, but comment on YouTube. Please like, comment, subscribe. Please you, uh, leave a review for Apple uh, Podcasts or Spotify. Give us a thumbs up. Um, and then, yeah, we're on all video and audio platforms. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.